So Emmanuel said uh, well a lot about uh, my background. So I worked uh, for the well in the digital performance um, area, and uh, I was part of the DOCAM project. So the research I represent today was born in uh, this context. I have to say uh, first that uh, the works of Johnny Polito, Richard Ranait, Pip Lovenson, Franco Moretti, Lev Manovich, William Forsyth, and Scott De La Hunter were uh, very inspiring for me. Researching on uh, digital performance, I was confronted with various challenges. First, uh, most of the time when there is no repertoire, artists are the first conservators of their work. A big part of the creation process produces digital documents, mails, text, sounds, video recordings, photos, programs, and so on. So, the researcher has to collect these documents to analyze the creation process. That's what I do. But there are thousands, hundreds of documents. If you take all the documents one by one, it's almost impossible to analyze the creation process of one work. So, will you spend all your life analyzing one performance? Well, I choose to do not. That is to say that I have a big data problem. A small big data, but a big data problem. By the way, this is one of the problems of the digital age. We produce more and more documents, and we don't erase them. Archivists do throw away a lot of documents. Forgetting is an activity. So big data is transforming theater research. We need new tools to analyze this huge amount of documents produced by the works, especially digital performances. Second problem. Now all stage management systems are digital. How can we avoid the impact of technological obsolescence on artistic creation? How can we document the technological solutions used in shows if only as regards to the sound and light control systems? Okay, you could say that performing arts are ephemeral, so there is no problem. But there is. A, technologi a technological cycle is more or less four years. Four years, it's a time to set up a performance from the first ideas to the premiere. So, all the performances, at least for the stage management controls, are concerned and have to adapt. It becomes increasingly challenging to remount, even to integrate a work to a repertoire. So in the case of the, of the performing arts, we should develop long-term strategies to reenact the performance months or years later. That is to say, not only document technological aspects, but the artistic intentions. We should be able to interpret a piece with new technologies. So is this mistake? Born digital heritage? <laughs> While research projects have mainly concentrated on digitized archives, it is urgent to take into account the born digital heritage. In the performing arts, born cultural heritage concerns both the works and the documentation of the works. So, this situation prompted the development of Recall, an open source environment designed for the performing arts. I initiated this project back in uh, 27 as part of the DOCAM project. And then in 2012, five years later, uh, because I had a grant, I started working with Guillaume Marais and uh, Guillaume Jacquemin and uh, Thierry Caudui as a consultant. So Guillaume Marais and uh, Guillaume Jacquemin are the developers of Recall. Two main aims have determined the way we've designed Recall. The first is to help artists to document their work. And the second one is to help researchers to study the genetics of stage productions in the context of born digital documents and big data. At first sight, these two aims might seem to be quite distant from one another. This is true in, term, in terms of their objectives. 
but it's not true from the point of view of the raw material. It's the same materials that are collected, analyzed, and viewed according to different modalities and within different time frames. So record is designed to document the work during the creation process and to document the video recording of the work when it is created. If we look at the ways we use documents to preserve time-based media artworks, we can identify, identify two main approaches. I don't have the time here to develop and to mention the state of the art, but just uh, to say a few words. The first one is the notation. Notation is transcription. It leads, it leads to the creation of a score. The second one is a notation. A notation is commentary. It applies to an existing document. We comment on what already exists. But with digital bond heritage, we can add a third approach, the notation. For the moment, I'm not sure it's a good terminology, but just let's try it today. The notation establishes a conventional relationship between a sign and its referent, for example, between a word and the explicit meaning of that word. Notation and annotation relate to close reading, a precise reading or analysis of a work or document. The notation makes distant reading possible. In other words, this makes it possible to identify models, motifs, and relationships between them when considering a very large corpus of documents. So denotation is a way of stepping away from the content of the document itself. But you need to come back to the document via close reading and, if required, annotate it. So how to combine close reading with distant reading? I think this is one of the main issues we have to deal within a context of small big data documentation. The complex nature of performance means that it cannot be reduced to a single approach. On the contrary, notation, annotation, and denotation must be combined to allow us to get as close as possible to the works and the creative process behind them. So today with Recall, we developed the annotation and the denotation aspects. We started the notation, in particular to score the stage management controls, but it's in progress and uh, it's not ready yet. So right now, we have two software, a web app to annotate video records of a performance, this is Memo Recall, and an environment dedicated to denotation, dealing with big data, close and distant reading, so this is Recall. Both are open source, free, and available on the internet. We wanted to develop tools that artists and researchers can use. So the demo I will do in a few minutes is part of a study case. During all the creation process of Recall, we worked with artists, among them Jean-François Perret and Milan Benoit. I will show you the object laboratory number one, which is uh, Rewilden by Jean-François Perret. So there is more than 10,000 documents. So I can't read all the documents. And the project began, began in uh, 29 and ended in 2014. There was uh, two installations, uh, performances, four stage versions, a concert, and a second life environment. So Recall is an open source environment and it brings together text, images, sound, videos, software, etc. in the same workspace. Recall structures all documents by recovering all the metadata. So this is the interface. Each dot represents a document. On the left, you have a menu with different viewing and filtering options. On the right, the metadata of the selected documents, and you can correct the metadata if needed. 
In the center, the upper part offers an overview of the documents in the form of thumbnails. And in the lower section, you can display the document with an horizontal and a vertical axis. So I will go to the software. So I will show you an example with only a selection of uh, Rewalden. So we have uh, in this example more or less um, 300 doc uh, documents. Okay, so you see here you have all the documents. And when you select one dot, you have here all the metadata of the documents. If you need to change, for example, the hotter, you can just uh, select and uh, the document will move. Okay. And uh, I will close this window to have more space. Um, it's not very really easy to show you on a uh, small screen, but here you see that all the documents are classified uh, by authors and here from the beginning of the work to the end. So this way you can just have an information of who was working when. So for example, Agnès de Cailleux was at the end of the process of creation and Thierry Caudry here at the beginning. So just working with the metadata, you can have some information of the, cre of the creation process. And then I won't go uh, a lot uh, with the demo of the software. If you're interested, you can just uh, s come and see me. You can move, for example, here and see uh, what kind, um, what type of documents they created when. For example, at the beginning, it was a work a lot on the images. And video was... Um, during very precise moments, and so on. One of the things which is important is that you, you can tag all the documents, and this way you can have an information of the evolution of a concept from the beginning to the end. So I will show you how it works. So this is a tree concept. And you, you see, for example, that, I don't know if, you, no, you, you doesn't see it. You just have to, when? No, we don't see. Maybe you, you, you can just have an idea of this small gray appearance. Well, sorry for that, but uh, the beamer does not have the definition. It's just here. It's, um, so this way you can see the evolution of the concept of the tree from one person to another um, during all the creative process. So this is for recall. There are many functionalities, but I, I, I will go I don't have enough time. So the second software is Memory Call. Memory Call is a web app dedicated to video annotation. Why video annotation? Because video recording is often considered as the main trace of a performance. But the video recording of a performance, and even more for digital performance, needs comments. In other words, it needs to be annotated. The concept with memory call is to provide a temporal document, a flow, onto which various documents can be graphed. They come as they are presented in the course of the performance, sketches of sets, audio commentaries, the, the description of technological elements, and so on. 
By doing so, we can provide access to a lot of documents in a structured way. Each document comments another document. This organization and content gives a better comprehension of the work. So this is an object uh, labori laboratory number two with Notre Dance by Mylène Benoit. And uh, for memory call, we just, uh, sorry for that. I will show you. Okay, so that's online. Uh, this is a uh, um, lecture uh, part of memory call. So you can, uh, the video is coming from YouTube, and you can annotate all uh, the video documentation with uh, notes here. And you can link uh, documents, uh, a selection of documents you want. So for example, here you have a PDF, which is uh, explaining uh, all the steps of the performance. And later on, you have another document, text document. Sorry. So you, you can add sounds, you can add uh, images, you can add what you want. And this is, uh, just to show you a few, sh few seconds, this is the editing part, it's very easy to use. You have three buttons. You can add links, notes, and files. And you determine uh, the um, duration of the document uh, you want to show uh, to annotate the, the video uh, documentation. And then if you uh, want to embed uh, this web documentary, you can uh, put it on a web page uh, as you want. So that's it. So there are many ways uh, to use memory call as a memo board for technicians, as a publication by cultural institutions, as a documentation on artistic process by artists, and so on. This documentation can be very helpful to restage your performance months or years later. So this is the beginning. This is the beginning. Here are the further steps we will develop. So the V1 of recall uh, will be available in November. You can download uh, the beta version on internet if you want to try. And uh, we will have an English website with tutorials for Christmas. Uh, we need to plug recall and memory call, and uh, we are working on that uh, these days. And uh, to develop the notation and collaborative aspects of the software. Here you have uh, the website for both projects. And uh, if you just uh, want to contact me, and uh, if you have answers, I, if you have questions, I hope I will have the answers. That's it. <laughs>